Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to take a look into get it package and how we create dependency injection. And in this episode we want to create a free layer architecture from the repository over services to the UI. And this will be part of a free part series where we want to create a profile page from Firebase. So we have the possibility to log in in the application we see here our profile page. In the three parts series, I want to talk in the first place how we can structure everything in a good architecture, then later how we set up the image and how we can upload a profile image, and then at the end how we can change user information specifically for that Firebase user. And now, without further ado, let's get started. What we want to achieve today is something like up there. We want to have the cloud Firebase with its different modules like Firebase Storage and Firebase Out and have three layers. One of them will be our repository layer. It's the first one below of the cloud. And inside of the repository layer, we want to have all the information how we as an application talk with Firebase and the cloud. Then underneath that one, we have the logic layer or the domain layer where we want to show how we work with the cloud information that we receive or which cloud versions we have to upload. And at last but not least is the UI layer. And the UI layer is just for the visualization of these data there. So all three layers have their purposes and their specific purposes, which helps us to keep our code as clean as possible. What I want to do first is I want to go through the different parts that I created yesterday and just explain briefly how they work and what is important about them. So first of all, we can see on the left side, we have the views folder where we have a home view, which is the same like this one the home screen. Then we have the login part where we have the login screen inside with all the information and the state for the login, which is currently hard coded. I can just uh, switch that, but I have just one account at the moment. And so I can sign in here. And now we are in the home view, which is very basic with an app bar to sh demonstrate that we have that. And we have the uh, profile page where we can jump inside. We see up here the header bar and down here the uh, menu. Also, we have a locator. And this is the first time that I use that in my tutorials. So we talk a little bit about get it. Uh, get it is a package that uh, delivers us a dependency injection. So we can use a single service in different places. So in that case, I register a singleton from the odd controller to get it. And we can call now locator.get to receive this odd controller. Okay, so how we do that is that we have in our main .dart, in our main function, we set up the services. And if we take a look into the locator, we find the setup services here. So we register the singleton, with that we run our app. Now we have in the whole app the possibility to access this locator and receive all the uh, services that we have registered inside there. Then we have another uh, widget, that is the external sign-in button. This is just on the first login screen, these two buttons down here. Back to the whole, um, profile page that we want to achieve. We want to add here an image today. So for that, first we have to s uh, save somewhere all the information about our users. To save them, we want to create a new folder called models. And inside of models, I want to have a user model.dart. And this user.model is, is a class, of course, which contains free information for us. First, the user ID, then we have the display name that is uh, necessary to show the user display name down here in the username placeholder. And the last thing is the avatar URL. And this is the URL to that specific um, avatar that we want to save in the storage. So now we create the constructor for our user model and this dot avatar URL. And with that, we are done. The only thing is what I want to do is the UID, for example, should be always necessary. So we have only two optional parameters like display name and avatar URL, but a UID is always, uh, has to be always set. With that, we will try to separate a bit more Firebase information and Firebase logic from the UI or more or less the service logic. So where our logic lives. And for that, I will create another folder which I will call Firebase Repository. This out controller that we have here, which I called view controller mistakenly, is more or less 
one of these Firebase repository controllers because as you can see, they have strict dependencies to Google sign-in and to Firebase Auth. And I don't want to pollute all the application with this information. And now what I will do is I just move that to that Firebase repository and I will also rename that to Ort Repo. With that, for me, it is clear. Um, I will also change this um, out rep Repo. And the benefit is now that I know this repo has information about Firebase. So it has directly specificas and information about the Firebase out. It will have access to the odd controller and so on and so forth. What is the next thing? Well, we want to work with the profile, right? So inside of our profile view, we want to change that slightly because this view will contain state. As you can see there, we have as state, we will have the username or the better the new username. Then we will change the password. And for that, we will have to set some kind of state. And to make it uh, for us easier to work with, I just use the stateful widget in that case. For that, we have to rebuild the whole app because, or hot reload the app, because if, it's, if a widget down the widget tree changes from a stateless widget to a stateful widget, we have to rebuild. And inside of our state, one important thing that we want to save is the current user. So we created the user model. This is our current user. What we want to do now or achieve now is that this profile view changes depending on this current user. So if this current user changes somehow, we want to change all the information down here. So for example, that high username placeholder should be dependent on the current user dot display name. But if this is empty, we want just to say, nice to see you here. With that, we make a null check against the current user and check for the display name. If this is null, we return nice to see you here. And this is what happens now. And that is already pretty good. But the problem is this current user is empty at the moment. Another thing that I want to do is because that circle avatar here will have a lot of logic. For example, um, if you click it, a gallery should show up and so on. I will create a own um, widget for that. For this, I will create inside of our views currently um, the profile image. And inside here, I will have the avatar widget and create a class uh, or better a stateless widget called avatar. First of all, we have two variables that we are wanting to listen to. The first one is the avatar URL. And the second one is a function on tab. Because we don't want to change um, the state of the avatar, we want to change uh, later the state of the profile view. We have to give the on tab function as a callback. So we create with that the constructor. We can remove that super key. I think it is not necessary. And with that, we have these two parts. And what we want to have here is this circle uh, avatar. Besides, we just want to call avatar and import it, of course. In our avatar, we replace this part. Voila. And now it still looks the same. But now what we want to do or what we want to achieve is if we click this center, we need a gesture detector for that. And why we need that is because we have an on tab function. And what we do is just the on tab function that we get from the parent, we just give here inside as a callback. So whatever we give here inside on this on tab in the avatar will be here. And another thing that we want to do is if the avatar URL is is unequal to null, then we want to show uh, or is equal to null, we want to show the icons photo camera. But if it is, but if it is unequals to null, we want to show also the circle avatar. But instead of having a child with an icon, we just want to have an image and background image in that case. And we want to have a network image wherever the avatar URL lives. So it downloads the image itself. So now we have already our avatar and we can use that in our profile view. And as you know, we have to change here slightly something. So the avatar URL will be from our, from our current user and this could be null, of course. So we have to check the current user before we do that, before we access it. And the on tab function we will implement in a second. So to do, open the gallery, select an image. And after that, we want to, to do upload the image to Firebase storage. We want to upload the image. And at the end, we want to set the state, update the current user. So this is what we want to achieve. But now 
our current user is empty, right? So we have to get somewhere the information about this current user. And for this, I want to create a new view controller, which I will call the user controller. And the user controller will be our layer in between the UI where we see something and down on top the repository where the Firebase lives. So we don't want to pollute the information from Firebase to our UI. And for that, the user controller will take care of the call between in between them. So what I will do is now create a class user controller. And here we have, of course, our user model, which is also a current user. And as you see, I make this um, private so that we don't um, just pass down this current user because it can only change inside of this class here. But what we want to do is we want to receive that current user uh, with a getter function. Uh, how can we access now this user controller from our profile view? One option would be to create an instance of user controller and use that instance with every build of the state. We want to change, for example, in the login view, our current user if we do that um, always inside of an instance that we create directly on the state, we will lose that current user. So for that, we will create a singleton inside of our locator. So what we have to do here is we want to register a singleton. And you see there is a lot, a lot more like lazy singleton and so on. And now what we want to do is we want to have the user controller here. We say it is part of the user controller. And the benefit here is now we have access to the user controller wherever we are in the application. And additionally, because in the future I know already that this user controller will be dependent on the auth repo, we have to write the user controller or we have to register the user controller after the auth repository. We go back to the profile view because now we have the option to access this class, the singleton that we created. For that we call get and with get we receive now our user controller because the locator is exactly the same like everywhere else and we have the opportunity to get the current user now. So what happens now is we access with this current user whenever the ch state changes current user from the user controller that we create just once. But now our out repo has to deliver us the current user because the out repo is the only one who knows exactly how the current user looks like. So for that, we want to have a method that is a future of user model. We call it get user. What we want to do is say var firebase user. Uh, we await for all package and get the current user. And if we take a look into Firebase user, we will find, for example, the UI. Or what we also find in the current user is the display name. The only thing that we don't have here is the uh, avatar URL, because the avatar URL comes not from the Firebase auth package, it comes from the Firebase storage. But later we will talk about this in more detail. So, but what we want to do now with this information, I could now just return this in Firebase user, right? But then I would pollute all information from Firebase with all the functions because Firebase user has way more idea and knowledge like ID token, it's anonymous, is email verified and so on. I would all these information pollute down into the UI. And to avoid that, I will create here a user model. And as we know, it, the user model content contains always a UID and can contain a display name, which is in our case, this one. And with that, I return this. And now what happens is we create a new user model and we put that down wherever we want to use it. And the benefit of that is of course, that we don't have any ideas down anymore from the user model. So if we would access now, for example, I would have here a new user. If we would enter the user, we have only the information that we really need inside of our UI. But now in our user controller, we have to initialize our user somehow, right? So for that, we have the function in a user and here we want to change the current user. And the current user comes from our auth controller. And here we can do the following. We access again the locator and say get and get now the auth repo. And with that, we have now in the whole user controller class access to the auth repo which of course should be again private because nobody else has access to it. And we call get user. And our current user of the user controller is now this get user, which we have to await for. Now we have access to the get user. We return it inside of our current user. 
And as you maybe remember, the user controller current user is used inside of our profile view. So we managed it to pass the Firebase user down to the UI. And of course, we have to return the current user now. So with that, we have now access uh, or we can now initialize our user. But when do we want to do that? What happens if we are already logged in? As we know that Firebase is directly passing us through the login screen, for example. Now we are on the home screen and we just want to start up with that. So we want to have a method that calls in a user as soon as we start up the application. And in the worst case, it just returns null. So for that, what we want to achieve is we want to create a user controller constructor and inside of this constructor we will have a init future which we can listen to and this init is for example init user that means every function that we call in the future can wait for this init to be passed by and this user controller will execute this init user if we take a look into the locator as soon as this line is started because as you can see here we create an instance of the user controller and with that we have the opportunity to get our init user and with that we set this current user okay and now with that setting of the get current user we managed it to separate all the concerns at the moment correctly so as you know we have the file, um, out repo service where we can train our information which one talks to Firebase. We have our user services or user controller, which is a separation between the Firebase and the UI itself. And at the end, we have the UI that just takes care of how to display the data that it receives. All right, so now we had a quick and short overview about get it. We used as re register singleton and used multiple singletons. The next part will be containing the information how you can set up a profile picture for your Firebase users and work with Firebase storage. Thank you so much for joining me today. Down in the video description, you'll find all the necessary links that you need. And if you feel uh, like it, please give the video a like. Up here, you have two videos that you are maybe interested in. And on the right side, you find, as always, the subscribe button. Thank you for joining me today and enjoy the rest of your